So you might have noticed that if we look at a circle, the area of the circle is equal to pi r squared. And if we take the derivative of the area with respect to the radius, we get 2 pi r. But 2 pi r is also the circumference of the circle, the length all the way around the circle. And so in the case of a circle, it seems like the derivative of area is equal to circumference or perimeter. But it doesn't seem like this is true for most shapes. For example, if we look at a square, the area of the square is given by the side length squared, and the perimeter is given by 4 times the side length. But the derivative of s squared is 2s, not 4s. So it doesn't seem like the derivative of area is perimeter every time. But in fact, there's a way to write the area and the perimeter. There's a particular variable that we can choose that makes the derivative of area equal the perimeter for every shape, not just regular polygons, not just polygons, not just things with straight sides, any shape at all. A shape like this, we can make the derivative of area equal the perimeter as long as we choose the right variable to express the area and the perimeter. Now, in order to understand how this works, we first have to think about scaling up a shape. So let's consider this rectangle. It's going to have some particular area and some particular perimeter. Let's call the area A0 and let's call the length L0. So this is the initial area and perimeter of our rectangle. Now let's say we take this entire shape and we scale it up by some factor we'll call lambda. So now this is going to be a bigger rectangle by some multiple. That means that all of the side lengths are suddenly going to become lambda times longer. So the new perimeter is going to be L0 times lambda because L0 is determined by the length around the shape. And when we scale it up, all of the lengths are going to become lambda times longer. Now on the other hand, if we look at the area, the area is a product of lengths in both directions. So if the length this way gets scaled up by lambda, and the length this way also gets scaled up by lambda, then the area is going to get scaled up by lambda squared. Our new area is a0 times lambda squared. You can think about, in the simple case, if we take a square, the area of a 1 by 1 square is 1. But if we scale up everything by 2, a 2 by 2 square has an area of 4. And of course, that's 2 squared times 1. Now here's the key. When we start with some shape, for any length along this shape, we could scale up or down until that length were equal to 1. We could scale this down until this side length is equal to 1. Or we could scale this up until this length is equal to 1. We could always choose a scale to make some particular length equal to 1. And what happens if we pick a length, let's call this length r, and then we choose our starting scale to be the scale where r equals 1. Well, a0 and l0 are the values at the starting scale. So in this case, they're the area and the perimeter when r equals 1. And at any other value, if we scale up by a factor of lambda, lambda is going to be equal to r, because r starts with a length of 1, and we scale it up by lambda, we're going to get r equals lambda. So that means we can write l equals l0 times r, and a equals a0 times r squared. The way we do that is by choosing to calculate l0 and a0 at the particular scale, when this side length r is equal to 1. Then, whatever scale factor we choose, whatever lambda we choose, we're scaling up the length of 1 by lambda, and therefore r will equal lambda, we can substitute that into the equation. So now we know that we can write the perimeter and the area in terms of any reference length we want, as long as we take these constants in the front to be the perimeter and the area when that specific length is equal to 1. 
Now from here, let's suppose we have some specific reference length and we've written the perimeter in the area in terms of that reference length, just like this. What we want to know is which lengths give us the derivative of area equal to the perimeter. Well, let's look at the derivative of the area, dA over dr. If we do this, of course, by the power rule, this is going to equal 2 a naught r. Now our goal is to have the derivative of area with respect to that length r being equal to the perimeter. Let's see if we can write this in terms of quantities that we know. The first thing I'm going to do is multiply by r on the top and bottom, just like this. So on the top, we're going to get 2 times a naught r squared. But we know a naught r squared, that's equal to the area. So on the top here, we're going to get 2 times the area over r. And we said we want that to equal l. So let's solve for r. If we multiply by r and we divide by l, that's going to give us r equals 2a over l. So this is the reference length that we should choose. So we've just shown that if we write the area and the perimeter in terms of the reference length r equals 2a over l, then it will give us the derivative of a with respect to r being the perimeter. Let's look at a few examples to see how this works. First of all, like we saw earlier, we know it works for the circle. So let's say we have a circle of radius capital R. What reference length should we choose to make the derivative of area be the perimeter? Well, the reference length we want to choose is 2 times the area divided by the perimeter. We know the area is going to be pi times capital R squared. And the perimeter is going to be 2 pi times capital R. And of course, everything here is going to cancel except this extra factor in the numerator. And therefore, the reference length we want is just the radius of the circle. And that's what we saw earlier. If you write the area and perimeter of a circle in terms of its radius, the derivative of area equals perimeter. Let's look at one more example. Let's say now instead of a circle, we have a rectangle with side lengths s and k times s. In this case, let's see what reference length we want to choose. We want 2 times the area over the perimeter. Now the area is going to be ks times s, which is ks squared. And the perimeter is going to be ks plus s plus ks plus s. So if we factor out the s, we're going to get 2 times k plus 1 times s. So if you distribute this out, you'll see that this is equal to ks plus s plus ks plus s. And we see here this 2 is going to cancel with the s in the denominator. These 2's are going to cancel out, and we get k over k plus 1 times s. This is the reference length that we want to choose. Now let's double check our work and make sure that this actually works. Now we know again that the area is equal to ks squared. But we can write s as s equals k plus 1 over k times r if we just flip this equation to solve for s in terms of r. Now if we do that, we can write ks squared just in terms of r. This is going to equal, this k is going to cancel with one of the k's in the numerator, k plus 1 squared over k times r squared. This is the result that we get for the area. What about the perimeter? Well, the perimeter we saw again, this is 2 times k plus 1 times s. And if we do substitute s equals k plus 1 over k times r, that's going to give us 2 times k plus 1 squared over k times r. And would you look at that? If you take the derivative of area with respect to this reference length r, we're going to get a 2 out in the front, and we're going to have an r on the side. The derivative of area equals perimeter if we write it as k over k plus 1 times s for our reference length. Now let's see if we can find a formula for the reference length, the length that makes the derivative of the area the perimeter, for any regular n-sided polygon. I'm going to use a hexagon as an example here, but this works for any number of sides. In order to do that, we're going to start by looking at the inscribed circle. Now a few things we know about the inscribed circle from geometry. 
First of all, we know that the center of the inscribed circle is the same as the center of the regular polygon. And we also know that the inscribed circle is tangent to the side of the polygon at every edge. If we draw a radius of the inscribed circle down to the edge of the polygon and say this radius of the inscribed circle is capital R, we also know that the radius is perpendicular to the circle at the edge here. And because the circle is tangent to the side, this radius of the inscribed circle is going to be perpendicular to the side of the polygon. Now we want to find the area and perimeter of this polygon, and let's suppose it has some side length s. In order to find the area, we can split up the n-sided regular polygon into n different triangles by drawing lines to each of the corners. Now each of these triangles is going to have the same area because they're all congruent, so we can find the area of one of the triangles and then use that to figure out the area of the entire shape. So let's take a look at one of these triangles close up. Right here, we draw the radius of the inscribed circle from the center of the polygon all the way down to the edge. There's going to be a 90 degree angle here, and this length is r, the bottom side length is s. So what's the area of this triangle? It's going to be the area 1 half base times height is 1 half r times s. So. We know that there are n triangles here. For the hexagon, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 triangles. And so if we want the area of the entire polygon, all we have to do is add up the areas of each of these triangles. We have n triangles. They all have the same area. So the total area is going to be n over 2 times r times s. What's the perimeter of the regular polygon? Well, we know that there are n sides, and each side has a side length of s. So the total perimeter is going to be n times s. So what is our reference length over here? r is going to be equal to 2 times the area. Well, 2 and 1 half are going to cancel out, so we get nrs. We divide by the perimeter, which is ns. Would you look at that? ns cancels we get the radius of the inscribed circle. So if we write the area and the perimeter of a regular polygon in terms of the radius of the inscribed circle, then the derivative of the area will always be the perimeter. The other interesting result we get here is that the radius of the inscribed circle of a regular polygon is equal to 2 times its area divided by its perimeter. And we can check that for the case of an equilateral triangle. The radius of the inscribed circle is going to be equal to 2 times, first of all, what's the area of an equilateral triangle? I'll tell you that it's the side length squared times root 3 over 4. And then the perimeter of an equilateral triangle, of course, is 3 times the side length. And if we do this out, we're going to get on the bottom 2 over 4, that's a half, divided by 3 again, we get over 6 on the bottom. And then if we have s squared divided by s, that's just going to give us 1s square root of 3 like this. So the radius of the inscribed circle of an equilateral triangle is equal to root 3 over 6 times the side length. Now this video is inspired by a video by Epic Math Time, which also covers the regular polygon case. I've left the link to his video in the description so that you can check it out.